Welcome to yet another by request unboxing. I have received countless inquiries about the Razer Ouroboros, 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 whatever. It means a dragon eating its own tail and it's like some kind of ancient symbol or something. And basically it is their new super uber premium ambidextrous gaming mouse. It comes in a similar to Mamba-esque packaging that uh, I remember caused such a stir, stir back when the Mamba came out. Remember guys, the Mamba was the first wireless gaming mouse that really performed like a wired gaming mouse even though it was wireless. So they're using a similar type of technology in this one where they're saying that you have the option of using it wireless with less than one millisecond of delay. Remember guys, most LCDs are on the order of 10 to 30 plus milliseconds of delay. So an extra one millisecond on your mouse is not gonna be the difference between, oh, input lag is so bad versus, oh, it you know is fine and it's like awesome. And just like the Mamba, you have the option to run it wirelessly or you can charge the battery and use it wired at the exact same time with the included braided cable. So you can use it in wired or wireless mode, no big deal. Here's another thing I love, check this out. Something that drove me crazy about my G7, I used a G7 for a couple years actually, was the fact that it had those stupid custom battery packs. Now, you never ever have to worry about not having a battery that's charged enough to use in your mouse, even once the batteries start to wear out. That's another thing that happened to G7 users. Just uses a standard AA battery and nickel metal hydride batteries will charge in the mouse. So please be sure not to use anything other than a nickel metal hydride battery because if it starts to try and charge it, it might be bad. I don't know if it would. I don't know that it would, but I'm just sort of saying in general, put in a nickel metal hydride battery, it won't kill you. All right, experience the new standard of precision with the 4G dual sensor system outfitted with both a laser and an optical sensor to accurately calibrate the mouse for exceptional surface tracking and customizable lift off heights. There you go. 8200 dpi crazy unrivaled gaming grade wireless technology means the ouroboros it's a well okay yeah we've covered that already three customizable parts more on this later and a bunch of other languages approximate size and weight and a bunch of things that we don't care about all right razor is so good at packaging let's see what they've included with this one we've got some razor stickers we've got some razor documentation that's not really the word for it at all all right, what's this guy? Congratulations, there's no turning back. Like us on Facebook and all that jazz. There's a picture of the mouse next to a razor blade. All right, Synapse 2.0. Synapse 2.0 is cool. They have also updated Synapse 2.0 since it came out to make it like way better because all your settings are still there even if you're in offline mode. So when you're online, it'll grab all your settings and all your games and all that cool stuff from the cloud. And then when you're offline, it'll just take whatever the local copy is. So Synapse, very, very, very neat stuff. It's kind of like uh, Valve's, Valve's cloud service where it remembers your game settings. Synapse remembers regardless of which computer you're on, regardless of what games it is, you just log into Synapse and it remembers your macros and all that good stuff for you. Hold infinity in the palm of your hand. Okay, yeah, this is about the adjustableness. So we'll, we'll more on that after. Quick start guide, product guide for other Razer products. Synapse 2.0. Oh no, this is just this product guide. So a bunch of, oh yeah, a bunch of good stuff in there, including the software and then another language product guide. Now let's see if I can figure out how to get this bad boy out of here. So pull this off. Okay, which should do something. Yeah, yeah, there we go. All right. That comes out of there. I remember with the Mamba, I really struggled with it uh, to get it off of the little pedestal that it was on inside the packaging. So hopefully this one I can figure out. It's been a long time since I did my Mamba unboxing, but I hope this one is a little bit easier to, to do. Okay, yeah, that's on there pretty darn good. Let's see if we can figure this here out. So there's, a, there's an arrow. Ah, ah, there we go. That's not so bad. Okay, it's not that heavy actually. It's surprisingly light. So once I figure out where all this stuff is, I will be back in a moment and then I'll show you what makes this pretty much as adjustable and customizable as it gets on top of its outstanding performance. So the Ouroboros is coming in as a customizable mouse. So there's a few different parameters that you can adjust. Number one is the position of the palm rest. See, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take that. See how you can tilt it like that for you know a larger hand where you're gonna palm the mouse uh, and then you can also tilt it 
completely the other way. Now, it's very subtle looking how the profile of the mouse changes when you adjust this, but what I discovered, and my wife and I were playing around with it uh, off camera for a little while here actually, she's a, a very fussy, fussy mouse user, and as am I, uh, what we discovered is it actually makes an enormous difference to the feel of the mouse, and we were able to get it dialed in to the point where both of us were like, okay, yeah, because when I first handed her the mouse, she went, Bleh. but then we played around with that as well as the length, so you can adjust the length of the mouse here. She has kind of long fingers and slim hands, so you can go ahead and you just push this piece down right here, okay, and that disengages it from the track, so you can go ahead and go click by click and adjust the length of the mouse. So you can go from all the way to a size that's comfortable for me, so you got my, my small hands here, see? So that's, that's comfortable for me, and then you can take it all the way out to the point where Slick could probably use it comfortably. I kind of wish he was here to try it out for me, but there you go. To the point where I'll put my hand on the back of the mouse and my fingers barely make it to the wheel. So you could have fingers that are, you know, this much longer than mine and you'd still be comfortable using the Ouroboros at its full length. And then you've got about three adjustment notches in between those. So that's really cool as well. Last but not least, you've got magnetic pieces on the sides. So here, you can adjust it however you want. So you can go, okay, I'm a palm grip user. I want my pinky to have something to rest on. I want my thumb to have uh, a rubberized grip. And, oh, these are cool too. So these are gear locks. Check this out. So it's again, it, this mouse is totally ambidextrous. You can adjust it either way for left-handed or right-handed use. So what these guys do is particularly with the grippy sides in place, they allow you to adjust your DPI while you're holding it down. So you can lock those buttons off, so you can put as much pressure as you want to lift it off the mouse pad or whatever else you want, or you can unlock them so they turn into a button. You can go, okay, da 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 da, -da full speed, hold down, Sniping at low, uh, at, uh, at low sensitivity, let go, and you're back to full speed. This is a hundred times better of an implementation versus mice like Ikari Laser, where you got a button here that toggles your DPI. This eh, is not easy to hit in the heat of battle, whereas this is part of your natural movement and you can do it as easily as, as anything else. So I, I'm actually, I really like that particular feature. I'm gonna go ahead and lock these off for now. And again, you can configure it completely the other way. These are magnets, so they're super easy to put in place, but they won't come off accidentally. You have to kind of fight with them to get them off. So, well not fight with them, but you have to, you have to mean it. Okay, so same thing, you can adjust it for left-handed use here. Now, if there was something that I had to complain about with the shape of the Ouroboros, it would be that I don't really have a place to put my ring finger. So here, watch this, guys. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on the mouse pad here so you can see. So my thumb, I can rest here, or I can adjust it with the rubberized grip, and I can rest on that if I'm more of a claw user and I wanna hold the mouse like that, I can even do this, and I can, I can claw the mouse like that. Go ahead and adjust this in. Lots of different ways to use it, whether you're a palm user or a claw user. This is probably how I'd use it as a claw user. Bring it down nice and short and then use it like that. Um, all right, so I can rest my thumb there with either of those options. Uh, index and middle finger, those are fine. Pinky finger, I can either rest right here on the little wing or I can throw this guy on again and I can, uh, I can use it as a, as a claw grip. I don't really have somewhere to put this finger, so it tends to kind of fall down here where it gets caught on this sharp piece right here or this sharp piece right here. It tends not to really be able to reach these two buttons on the other side of the mouse, so this contrasts with something like a Steel Series Sensei where you can actually, it's ambidextrous and it has front and back buttons on both sides, but you can actually reach those on the other side, whereas these ones are positioned a little bit further back, which I think is a function of the adjustable nature of the mouse, where if you were, pulling it all the way back, well, that's where they would need to be to be comfortably used. And if you put them way up here, that user with their palm at the back of the mouse like this wouldn't be able to reach them. So in order for everyone to be able to reach them, for us small-handed users, it becomes sort of a non-optimal location where I can't really press these comfortably with my pinky. Um, and these ones with my thumb are sort of more of a, um, a base of the thumb and then middle of the thumb buttons. Whereas on something like a G9, 
these are middle of the thumb, tip of the thumb buttons, and same for an Akari laser. So the reason I have a G9 and an Akari laser here, those are my favorite mice. One of them is more of a claw grip mouse for me and the other one's more of a palm grip mouse for me. And I wanted to take this jack of all trades and compare it to what I consider to be the masters of those particular trades. All right, so back to the buttons that are on the mouse. So you got your left, your right mouse button, your scroll wheel, really nice scroll wheel on this guy. You see those raised bumps right there? Very, very comfortable, nice soft rubber, really good grip, love it. Sensitivity up, sensitivity down, adjustable palm rest and rear panel that we've already been through. So here are your one, two, three buttons on each side, one, two, three. You can program all of these in the Synapse software. Don't forget that, guys. Next, you've got those gear locks that I showed you before. M is ultra stick, ah, yeah, ultra slick, ultra stick mouse feet. You put it down on your pad, ah, you can't move. No, I'm just kidding. Ultra slick, so you got them here, 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 on the bottom of the wings, and on the bottom of the magnetic removable pieces here. So those are all over the bottom. You've also got, okay, can't rear panel button, recliner, wheel, yep, yep. 8200 DPI sensors, one, two. And rechargeable battery, USB connector, ah yes, USB connector cable. So if you wanna plug that baby in, all you do is go like, well, something. Looks like it locks into some sort of piece of something there. There you go, it's gold plated, so it's good stuff. You got a nice braided cable here, so you shouldn't have any issues with that. Again, gold plated connector on the other side. It's funny, they gold plate this part, but the only part that actually has to be gold plated is the connectors inside. But I think it looks more le bling that way, so I can understand why they do it. Charging four hours, four hours gets you to 90% battery. That's really cool. So it's kind of like the, uh, it's kind of like my iPhone 4 where I can give it a quick zap and I can get back going pretty quickly, but it actually takes quite a while to get to full charge. So four hours for 90%, eight hours for 100%. So that last little bit takes quite a while. And there's instructions here on how to actually uh, take the battery out. So you slide this bad boy up and you go ahead and load the battery in there just like that. Oh, and it glows green, folks. Very, very nice. So you've got green glowing accents here, here, and here, and here, which looks really, 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 really cool. Then we're gonna go ahead and put that back where back where I want it, and I want the uh, I want the wing over here. I love how quickly you can adjust things on it. I mean, you've got other adjustable mice. I mean, things like G9 is adjustable. It comes with two different outer pieces as well as adjustable weights, but it takes like, you know, you gotta like take this off and take, go get another one, it's kind of a pain. Whereas this is actually, you know, you can have all the pieces on and off with magnets basically. So wireless mount, yeah, I don't think we're, I don't think we're really missing anything here. How to pair it, you press the button, press the other button, not a big deal. So, you know what, let me connect it and I'll have a look at what I think, because I was super stoked on the G600 from Logitech. It looked like the perfect ergonomics for me, still love the ergonomics of it. Great button layout, but the sensor just felt laggy. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna install the drivers for this guy and let's see what I think. So if you guys were wondering what 8200 DPI looks like, I think we really have reached the point where we're at the limit of how much DPI is needed. I have my mouse pointer up in the very top left corner. I move the mouse that much, it's in the bottom left corner. Did you even see how much, oh watch, I'm gonna do it again. Magic trick, okay, bottom left, top right. <laughs> so I think that's a little bit on the high side for me personally, but you can adjust the stages so you can sort of go da 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 and you can configure where you want the various, there we go, configure sensitivity stages. You can have up to five stages, so it's at 800, 1800, 4000, 6400, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I find with higher resolution monitors, you do need the higher DPI settings, but this is just a 1080p monitor. So something like 800 to 1000 would probably be absolutely perfect for me. You can adjust in 100 increments, there we go. Yeah, 1000 looks like, looks like the magic bullet for me. Bunch of other stuff you can customize, including what all the buttons do, as well as uh, oh yeah, you can see the side views of the mice. There you go, top view, side view, performance. Ah uh, yes, acceleration, keep it off unless, I don't know, you're some kind of person who likes acceleration, not that I'm generalizing. Um, lighting, bright, normal, ah, oh, you can change the brightness. You can go for, oh okay, in wireless mode, you can turn them down just to make sure that you don't drain your battery with the lights. Surface calibration, you can turn that on. Others, add mats, lift off range, you can change that as well as power settings. So when does it enter sleep mode after idle? Flash the battery indicator when the battery falls below five, 10, 15, 20, or 
gives you lots of good, oh, and macro programming. So this is all done within Synapse, and Synapse will go ahead and make sure that everything is you know, taken care of for you. So what do I think? Feels all right. I mean, I, for me, it's mice never come down to spec. They come down to how responsive does it feel? Does it feel right? Um, Yeah, you know, other than not knowing where to put my ring finger, I think we're I think we're in good shape with the Ouroboros. However, one thing that I did get tricked by, and as a seasoned unboxer, I mean, I even wear a shirt that says a professional unboxer on it. I'm feeling pretty ashamed of this, but I unboxed a wireless mouse without actually managing to find the wireless base station, which is here. So it's a weighted base station, it's got a rubber grip on the bottom so it's not going to go anywhere. You can put the plug into this bad boy, just like that, and then you can drop the mouse on there for your charging purposes, just like that. Thank you for checking out my unboxing and first look at the Razer Ouroboros. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.